In this video, we're going to go through a technique which will help you to determine the motion of each particle on the wave depending on the question if they are asking for in the next moment or at this particular instant. Firstly, you are expected to know that this is a transverse wave and therefore you can treat it as just like a water wave and all the particles is like a floating object or we can think of it as a coconut floating on the water or a rope wave and it's given that the direction of the wave is to the right since this is a transverse wave you are expected to know that the direction of the vibration of the particle is either up or down perpendicular to the direction of the wave so that means to say, if I ask for the motion of each particle, it will never be left or right. It will either be up or down, perpendicular to the direction of the wave. Now let's focus on the first question here, the direction of motion of all the particles in the next moment. It's like one second later, you can think it this way. So perhaps if you want, you can pause the video and then try to imagine or guess what's the direction of the motion. And then we come back to this video to learn the techniques. So now let's continue. The first thing I want you to do is to draw a horizontal line linking all the crest and the trough. So this will serve as a guiding line later on when I draw the new position of the wave. I will know where it will reach the highest point, the crest and the trough. So as the wave is moving to the right, so the next moment the whole wave will be shifted to the right. So every single point you're going to shift it to the right by the same amount. So if you do that, okay, this the one in red will be the new position of the wave the next moment. So the dotted line will guide me to know where is my lowest point and the highest point so that my wave will not be out of shape. So, so th there you have it. This is the new position of the wave the next moment. And as mentioned, you can think of the, all the particles are like coconut floating on the water so the particle has to be on the wave so it's very clear now you see that the next moment this a will be at this position because it can only move vertically up or down so this will be a will be going down and likewise for b it will be going down and b is actually very obvious because just now it's already at the highest point at the crest so the next moment it has to come down for C, a bit tricky, so this is actually going up. Then for point D, it's the same, it's at the lowest point, so the next moment it will be going up. For E, it will be coming down. Then for F, it will be going down also. Likewise for G, down. And H will be up. And I will be up. J will be up. So that's how you solve it. Now next for question number two, what if it's changed to the motion of all the particles at this particular instant, the one in black? Now the techniques is still the same. I will still require you to draw the position of the new wave the next moment, which is the one in red. So beside those, there is the, at the crest and the trough, let's say for B, okay, this point here, and D, G, and J. So at this point, there's something, the answer will be different. But for the rest, like your A, your A, your C, your F, your E, H, and I, the answer will be the same because it's in the process of coming down. So at this particular instant where you freeze it, A is in the process of coming down and C is going up. So the answer will be the same. So the techniques will be the same. But the answer for B will be different because at this particular instant, B is at the highest point at the crest there or at the peak. So B is momentarily at rest. Likewise for G, D, and J because they are at this moment, they are making a U-turn. So their snow speed is momentarily at rest. Another thing that they can ask you is to find two particles that are in phase or sometimes they will ask you to find two particles that is out of phase now in phase means it both particles will have the same velocity 
because the direction is important so they have the same speed in the same direction or you can say that they have the same displacement the position with respect to the uh, whatever reference point will be the same so if you need to look at all the particles which two you list down which two are in phase the answer will be if this is B okay the next one will be G so B and G are in phase likewise D and J are in phase because they are always moving in the same direction same speed and if it's C another one will be H that will be in phase but if I will I need a uh, two particles that are out of phase that means to say they are moving in opposite direction so B if one is B the other one will be D so that will be out of phase and if one is C then particle F will be out of phase to C so because they are moving in the opposite direction you can see it here C is going up well F at the same undisturbed position it is going down so it is out of phase so there are many other examples here I mean I'll just list out a few for you to see hope you understand before we end the video maybe let's try to see whether you have learned the techniques correctly let's assume this wave is moving to the left instead of right so what you need to do is all the point on the wave will be shifted to the left by the equal amount so first of all I need to draw the new position of the wave which is the one in blue and then the answer will be very different so for A it will be going up so for B it will still be coming down because it's at the highest point and for C it will be going down for D it will be going up for E it will be going up likewise for F it will be going up G will be going down and then H will be going down, I will be going down and J will be going up. So there is a difference whether the wave is moving to the right or left so you have to read the question carefully. So I hope with this video you are able to use this technique to solve this kind of question.